Oh, man. <laughs> I had the bright idea. Because a couple of years ago, I watched for the very first time every Medea movie ever. <laughs> At least all the ones that I could find. So now I decided, well, Tyler Perry has other films that don't involve the Medea character. So now I'm watching every Tyler Perry movie. Fuck. What is Brit about to do? Brit! Oh my god, Brit just hit Cody! Brit just attacked Cody Rhodes with a chair! What a bitch! What is up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I am starting this Tyler Perry movie reviews with his official first non Medea film. I'm not talking about the plays and the whatever. Why Did I Get Married is a 2007 film that, get this, it's written, produced, directed, and starring Tyler Perry. That's literally how it's worded on IMBD. And I said, God damn it, motherfucker. You're not that talented. There are plenty of other writer, director, actors that you see in Hollywood. And sometimes it might look self-indulgent that they put themselves in their movies. Some people can argue Tarantino should not be acting in anything ever. But Tyler Perry, he does everything. And... His acting's bad. His writing's bad. His, I mean, his directing, I guess I can say it's fairly straightforward. There's nothing terrible, obviously terrible about it. Mm, well, maybe I'm giving too much credit. But I, I don't get it. He's longing to be famous. And you know what? He succeeded. Everybody knows who the fuck he is by face, by name. So... Kudos to you, you got what you wanted. But boy, do these movies suffer whenever he chooses to write and act. And for whatever reason, say what you want to say about the Medea character. You can say it's over the top, which I have. You can say that it's super cheesy and corny. The dialogue, her jokes, her sense of humor, and I have. But at least he does a pretty good job acting like that older woman. Somehow, some way. He makes you buy that that's a real life breathing person, even though she's ginormous. As a regular person, Tyler Perry as just a dude, he's the least believable acting I think I've ever seen. He does not know how to be a normal guy. You could tell he looks uncomfortable. You can tell he's looking around the room looking for that wig and that dress because seeing him as the husband to this wife and they're having issues, and they're not getting along, and they have no chemistry. I know the point of this movie is that these married couples all have different problems to various extent, but they're the ones who I don't buy as a couple, even more than the really bad couple. Let's talk about some of the other cast. Jenna Jackson <laughs> is in this movie. Uh, it's hard to say that she's the main character, because they all sort of get an equal amount of time. But Janet Jackson plays this person that I think she writes books about herself and her friends, like the marriages and what they all do to sort of try to keep their marriages going, how they try to make their marriages work. I think every year they go up to this like cabin in the mountains for a retreat to work on themselves, to work on their relationships and blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit. And Jenna Jackson and her husband, uh, they probably have the better story out of anyone else, just as far as something relatable or fucked up to where you feel bad for their situation and how they're dealing with it. And acting-wise, she's not bad. She's actually pretty decent, especially from somebody that... I know she's been in other movies, but she's not primarily an actress. She's not acted in a lot of things. So I thought she was decent. Jill Scott, this might be the most offensive thing that's in this film, and not just offensive like, oh, I'm offended, so I'm going to complain. No, I just mean the the way that he tries 
Tyler Perry does, tries to present this in a serious way, but it's so over the top, it's so goofy, and it's so melodramatic. Melodramatic ought to have been the subtitle of this film, given the situation going on here. So Jill Scott is married to this guy. The actor is Malik Yoba, who I've seen in a few things. He's a decent actor. And it's so over the top. It's so goofy. They start off on the plane because they're going. And Jill Scott, she's a bigger woman, right? So the fucking stewardess goes on, goes up to her and says, well, because of your weight and size, you either have to pay for two seats or you have to leave. And I think I knew that that was a thing where bigger people have to pay for two seats. But Jill Scott, I didn't think she was that big to warrant the two-seat rule. It just seemed really weird and super embarrassing that the fucking plane guy did that in front of everybody. But then her husband, he like jokes about it and laughs about it and says, well, I'm not paying for two seats, so you're going to have to fucking drive. Goodbye! And I, the, I was, huh? He's so much a piece of shit. He's such an asshole, this husband character. And he's also on the plane sitting next to his girlfriend. Yes, his wife, Jill Scott, is being kicked off the plane, and he's sitting next to his girlfriend. Now, I guess Jill Scott doesn't realize that he's openly obviously cheating on her with this girlfriend i mean it's so in her face but it's just his friend yeah sure and and she drives jill scott drives to the cabin i thought she was going to spend this whole movie trying to drive but she gets snowed out and she can't make it blah 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 but it's only like first 20 minutes she runs into the sheriff of the town who's some good dude that's really nice to her but it, it was such a why is she putting up with this? I know there are women who are in fucked up relationships and fucked up marriages. I'm not being naive to this. But for whatever reason, Tyler Perry presents these situations in such an unrealistic, uh, in such a non-believable way that I either can't believe how ridiculous this is or how over the top the characters are, but... It makes me also not feel bad for some of these characters like a Jill Scott when she the there's one scene where she buys this new lingerie or not even it's a nightgown it's it's a robe she's mostly covered up but she's trying to flirt with her husband in bed and he just starts laughing at her and saying you you look like you're wearing a tent and he's just he's being an asshole and it's like I'm on the verge of laughing because it's so ridiculous, but they're playing the super dramatic music. Like, oh, let's, let's feel bad for this situation. No, fuck that. <laughs> this is stupid. This is very stupid. Uh, Michael Jai White. It was actually refreshing to see him in a movie that wasn't like, hey, he's going to be a martial arts action guy. I mean, he's good at that, but I like seeing him just playing a dude, right? And he, him and, and his wife who's played by Tasha Smith. At first, I thought she was so annoying. She was so loud, so obnoxious. And I said, I'm going to hate her for the rest of this movie. But then when they get to the cabin, and when the wife, his wife, sees what Jill Scott's husband is doing, and he's obviously cheating on her, and he's obviously treating her bad, she starts, the Michael Jai White's wife, she starts being loud and angry, but she directs it towards them. She's yelling at the other husband. And I'm kind of like, well, she's right. <laughs> and she's the only one addressing the situation. So now I kind of like her in a weird way. I mean, they talk about how she has a drinking problem and she does treat Michael Jai White bad. Uh, clearly, Tyler Perry casted Michael Jai White though because there's one scene where Michael Jai White comes into the the bedroom and he's wearing like just shorts and he's fucking huge and jacked and muscles on top of muscles and I have a feeling Tyler Perry enjoyed that very much also there is this scene this is like halfway through the movie where I call it the dinner scene with secrets <laughs> Everyone's secret just comes out in, once again, an over-the-top, melodramatic, unrealistic 
way. And everyone's relationship sort of blows up because everyone has these fucked up situations, fucked up secrets that they have with each other. But then there's like another hour to the movie after that. I thought at that dinner scene that, oh, well, this is the climax and this is how maybe another 15 minutes the movie's going to end. And then I checked the time and saw that, no, there's like 15 minutes still left. I'm like, what? What else are we going to do after that? That should be it. It's over. They should get a divorce. They shouldn't be together anymore. And I don't give a fuck what happens to this couple. But let's be done with this. I could not believe that there was this aftermath of all of this stuff of like, let's watch Tyler Perry and his wife work out their issues, which I didn't care, especially because of how bad his acting was. Let's watch Michael Jai White finally choke his wife. I say finally, I'm not condoning that, but the movie almost made it seem like it wasn't until he grabbed his wife by the neck and almost killed her that she finally started respecting him. And it was like, ooh, uh, what, how am I supposed to feel about this? And then we watched this whole thing of Jill Scott marrying the sheriff, getting out of her relationship, and now her ex-husband regrets cheating her like a piece of shit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen worse Tyler Perry movies, don't get me wrong. And so that's why I probably won't sit here and say that this is the worst shit I've ever seen. I'm sure I am about to see also worse to come. But I will also say that this is bad. This is bad writing, bad acting. You do have those moments where you can't believe it. And I could absolutely see older black women losing their shit at some of the ridiculousness of this. And I'm sure that's who his audience appeals to. Kudos to Tyler Perry for making these movies so cheap that they make enough money to where he just will not stop. And so let's see how much further I can get without blowing my brains out. All right, guys, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. Have you seen Why Did I Get Married? Isn't there a sequel to this? God fucking damn it. Later. Time's changing quickly for me and you. The future's come, it's come for you. The moment upon your very eyes. The lies around you, I hypnotize. I take my thousands, 144. Hands spread wide open, light up the floor. The things come past from here on out. No more delay or benefit of doubt. The prophecies, they talk to the sound. I've been waiting patiently to bust.